Welcome to the 25th anniversary pilgrimage of the North American Martyrs. We are graced with the presence of Father Wegner, our district superior. So certainly please greet him, certainly speak to him if you wish. He is offering his time, his first presence here, which is a great honor for us on this occasion. He will be offering the solemn high mass at the end of today. Welcome to all of you new pilgrims. Some of you it might be the fear of the unknown before us, a very good, organized, beneficial pilgrimage before us, and thus we want to start with a few words to encourage us and focus us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. When we come to this 25th anniversary and this 25th kickoff sermon, we could consider the whole album of events that have taken place these last years, the rainy days, the injuries, the sweat that has poured forth from our faces, those who have come even today for their 25th time, for which we are grateful for your presence. We want to firstly thank, not being able to go back over those pictures, the images, the stories, the memories of those past 25 years, However, we do want to have the intention of gratitude, to thank. If we are here today, it is because of those pilgrims who have led the path, the path of this pilgrimage, but certainly also going far back to the martyrs who trekked the same path that we will take and who ultimately had to die for the faith to encourage us to persevere in the fight for our souls. But do have the intention today of gratitude However, what can focus us? What can keep us on the right intention throughout these 10 to 12 miles? There is so much commotion. There will be so much to see, so many people to speak to. We have to look at the end. The end in mind will help us focus so that we can grasp all the graces offered by Almighty God. There are innumerable graces. For those not knowing on a pilgrimage, there's an offering of a plenary indulgence. That is to say, all of your temporal punishment gained through sin is going to be deleted from your soul if you receive this plenary indulgence. No matter what lives you have lived, although you've made good confessions, you still must pay back, pay restitution for those sins through purgatory, through penance, However, today, you can put all of that in the past. That is the mercy of the Holy Mother Church. So do try to receive this plenary indulgence. And it's not only for those who complete the pilgrimage. It is for those who participate, even those helping with this truck, the food, the transportation, those on this pilgrimage, whatever manner they are able, receive this opportunity. But there are five conditions and please remember them as often we forget. St. Pius X one time gave his plenary indulgence blessing, and it was asked by his Secretary of State, how many do you think received that blessing, that plenary indulgence, amongst thousands before them in Rome? And he said two people, himself and his Secretary of State. Let that not be the case today, dear pilgrims, but let us try to fulfill these requirements the first is to do the pilgrimage. You are here today, you have fulfilled the first requirement. The second is to have a confession eight days before or after, which you can do today. There are many confessors here throughout the chapters between go to a priest to have your confession heard. Even if you've made a confession recently, a time to really dig deep and to consider how you want to repair for your past sins. Thirdly, is to receive Holy Communion today, which we'll have the opportunity to do at the end of this pilgrimage tonight. And fourthly, is to pray for the sovereign pontiff's intentions, which we can do, and I ask all of the chapter leaders to make sure during this day that you pray for the intentions of the sovereign pontiff. And lastly, the one that is the most difficult is to have no attachment to even venial sin. What that means is that we, right now, make the intention of not being attached to even the smallest of our sins of lying, disobedience, disrespect, lack of charity. 
It's not that you don't have that sin upon your soul because we are weak. However, not, be do, not to be attached to it. Make that intention now and thus you will be able to be a member possibly of these plenary indulgences. But looking at our end, the end, if you have been at the shrine that we will go to today, is filled with crosses. The crosses is called the land of crosses, Asasteron. You will see red crosses throughout the whole shrine. And that is for us, the image that we want to take with us today. You will see some pictures, some banners. You will have your rosaries in your hands, the cross. This cross will enable you to keep the graces in mind because attached to the cross are graces. Every cross brings a grace. However, it is so easy to forget the end, to forget the cross, to be distracted. If you heard a shout right now, a gunshot, a car that streaks behind us, you would most likely turn and see or look. You would be distracted from this few, these few words given to you now. The dog barking right now distracts you. And that shows you commotion takes us away from our focus. Please keep that in mind today because too often we ourselves keep away from others the graces that they are able to receive. Do not have commotion in your groups. You are here on a pilgrimage. Do not think of anything but the graces to be received from Almighty God through this great work that you are participating in today. And do not let the world at large become a distraction from your eternal destiny. Pilgrimages are images of life. This is a trek from a point A to a point B. That is life. We are born that point A and our point B is heaven. But due to the distractions, the commotions of the world, we often lose focus, lose the graces, and possibly put our souls in danger. Let this day, these few miles, be an opportunity for us to correct our lives, to enable us to end at, at the goal for which we were created. And we can do that if now, mile by mile, decade by decade, we can focus upon the end that is the cross that we will see at the shrine. And that cross has attached to it the graces meant for you. Try to keep in mind the concentration, the songs, the prayers, the rosaries, the meditations you will do. Try not to be distracted. If we distract another, we take from them a grace, an opportunity. And from ourselves, that grace that could be the one that we need. We do not need many things, just God. But because God speaks in silence, because God speaks through those simple opportunities, it is up to us right now to form that intention, to grasp that grace. And particularly this, this year, not only gratitude, we would like to take upon our shoulders a particular intention. All of you, should have multiple intentions for a loved one, for your own soul, for your vocation, for those who have gone before us, for the conversion of a sinner. Any intention you wish, make that now. However, I particularly ask of you a generous favor to pray for Father John Barbeau. Some of you know that on Monday he will have one of his legs amputated. It is due to a double injury, one while we were both in high school. We were both boarding at St. Joseph's Academy and at a rugby scrimmage, he broke his leg, which unfortunately happened to take a turn for the worst and he had to lose a muscle in that leg. He broke it again last February and it has not healed sufficiently and thus he has made that decision that difficult one, although he's been encouraged to do so for his health, to take off that leg. It's a portion, but it's part of his body. However, bodies don't matter, although 
They are there to help our souls get to heaven. So let us not allow our body to get in the way, as Father Barbeau has not allowed his body to get in the way. He's made that decision. He's made that difficult sacrifice of which he will endure on Monday and then the course of events to have a prosthetic. But if we all ask that God gives him the strength and to see in him an example to follow, to cut off that which is not enabling our soul, our body, ourselves to get to the end. An example to be seen. He will not be able to walk today. You might have saw him last night singing at the campfire one of his lax ass acts of gratitude to us before he takes off that leg. But let us remember him. And as we suffer in our feet, any sacrifice we may have to endure, remember him. And you can assure that he will be grateful to you. And if you have this generous spirit today, God will bless you enormously. Let us take courage and let us all participate in these graces to be had. Procedamos in pace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'll give you a blessing if you want to kneel down. Benedict Sud Omnipotentis Patris et Fidi Spiritus Sancti de Shena Super Vos et Maniat Semper.